My name is Vivek Prashant. I'm an assistant professor of surgery here at the University of Chicago. Uh, I'm a Chicago native. I uh, went to college and medical school at Northwestern. I did my surgical training at Washington University in St. Louis at Barnes Hospital. Believe it or not, I was actually 16 years old when I was uh, accepted to medical school because I was in the accelerated uh, uh, medical program at Northwestern. So. I don't know if anyone really knows what they want to do when they're 16, to be honest, but uh, my interest in surgery stemmed from an ex my experience during my uh, clinical rotations during medical school, and uh, I really enjoyed my general surgical uh, rotation. Uh, once I started residency, I realized uh, that I really enjoyed uh, minimally invasive surgery and the uh, idea that there's a lot to be learned and developed with regards to techniques and procedures and so forth and the ability to really uh, contribute to medical knowledge and as part of that uh, uh, doing bariatric surgery uh, would be a very important part in terms of developing this, these techniques as well. Well I joined the faculty in 2001 and uh, the appeal of the University of Chicago for me in terms of uh, my career and what I wanted to accomplish uh, was its focus on innovation and really being at the forefront of the development of uh, clinical and research uh, knowledge and techniques. Well, I'm a strong believer in the, the concept that when you're surrounded by people who are really smart and really accomplished, it forces you to become that much better and to elevate your game. And that, that challenge in that environment is, is probably the best thing about working here. Our bariatric surgery program is, is unique in that we offer three different operations uh, for surgical weight loss, the lap band, gastric bypass, and duodenal switch. Uh, one of my areas of interest is in trying to figure out uh, which patients should have which procedures based on the severity of their obesity, the types of medical problems that they have that are related to their obesity, as well as taking into account their preferences. because. There really isn't a lot of information out there, and so that's one of the major focuses that we have clinically uh, in our program. So traditionally, uh, these types of operations were done through a fairly large incision in the middle of the abdomen, extending from the breastbone down to near the belly button. And in patients who have severe obesity, incisions like this are associated with significant complications, specifically wound infections and the development of hernias long term not to mention the fact that there's generally more pain associated with them and recovery tends to take longer. With the laparoscopic approach, instead of making these, uh, this single large incision, we use a series of very small incisions uh, and insert a video camera inside the abdominal cavity to see what we're doing and insert the instruments to do the operation through the other incisions. I think it's important to understand that the operation that we do is identical to what we do when we're open and in many cases we, we can actually see substantially better uh, laparoscopically as opposed to open. And there's much lower rate of wound infections and hernias with the laparoscopic approach and the recovery is much faster. Well first of all is experience. Uh, we have uh, one of the longest standing programs and the longest standing in the city of Chicago itself. Uh, we offer, again, all three surgical options uh, for the treatment of obesity. And so we try to individualize uh, for each patient the type of procedure that sh they should have. I think it's uh, unrealistic to expect that one operation is going to be the best for all people in all circumstances. And again, we have not only an interest in trying to choose the best operation or recommend the best operation for each patient, but we actually have the experience and know-how to uh, provide all the services that, that might be needed. I think that uh, uh, patient choice is a very important uh, uh, part of our program. Again, when, when you're given all the various options and given the relative pros and cons of the different procedures, it allows the patient to make a better choice uh, with regards to the surgical procedure success rate, likelihood of cure of the medical problems that they have as well as lifestyle issues. Um, if you only offer one procedure, what I like to tell patients is that if you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. 
and uh, there's a tendency to underemphasize the relative uh, benefits perhaps of the procedures that you do not perform if you do not actually do those operations. So I think that that is uh, probably the biggest advantage uh, from the standpoint of the patient. We have a team approach to the evaluation and care of our patients as well, so psychologists and dietitians are integrally involved right from day one of the process. One of the first questions that I ask patients when I see them in the clinic uh, in terms of evaluation for bariatric surgery is, I ask them what is the one thing about their weight that bothers them the most? Now the general public uh, has this concept that probably the most common answer to that question is, I don't like the way that I look. And that's actually very low down on the list of the answers that I typically get. Probably the most common answer that I get is that um, I just can't do the things that I want to do or I need to do. And, and given the fact that many of our patients are women in their uh, early 40s who have young children who are really becoming active and so forth, um, that's really a major consideration uh, for them. And then the other major uh, consideration is the fact that you know, now they're being diagnosed with diabetes, hypertension, other obesity-related medical problems. And that really hits home for somebody who's relatively young and otherwise active. Um, those are disorders that we typically think of people in their 60s or 70s, not in their 30s or 40s. So I think that uh, it's very important to recognize that bariatric surgery, um, it's a big operation regardless of which operation that's done. And I think that there's, there's two contributors to that. Number one is if you take somebody who has severe obesity and have them undergo a general anesthesia, um, that in and of itself is associated with substantial risk. Once again, these patients oftentimes have numerous other medical problems uh, which put them at that risk. Uh, being severely obese puts people at risk of developing blood clots, uh, Pulmonary complications like pneumonia uh, are more common in, in uh, severely obese patients having surgery. So that in and of itself increases the risk to a certain extent. And then the operations that we do, um, two of the three operations uh, uh, require disconnection and reconnection of the stomach and intestine. And so anytime you do reconstructive procedures, there are some risks associated with that as well. The decision to have bariatric surgery in our program is a lifelong commitment both on their part as well as on our part. Uh, we work as a team, once again, with psychologists and dietitians uh, throughout uh, the care of the patient. And it's not just during the time of surgery. Every post-operative visit that patients come to, they're seen by the dietitians. If there are psychological issues, the psychologists see them as well. And we fully expect to see patients for the rest of their lives. Two years after surgery, that might mean once a year instead of every six months. Uh, but it is a lifelong commitment on both ends.